Shutana. If you're alive this evening, just lift up your hands and worship God. And tell him how good, how wonderful he is. Oh, Lord, we exalt you. We enthrone you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We worship your name, oh God. We exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. Oh,
somebody shout hallelujah. We thank God for the rendition from the choir and we pray that God will continue to anoint you for greater works in Jesus' name. Kindly let us pray. Father, we declare that we love you. 
We declare our everlasting love for you. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare our everlasting love for you. Father, we declare that we love you. Son, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. And we know you love us first, even before we love you. You love us so much that you gave yourself to us. And through your love, we are in your presence today. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we gather together today at your feet, bringing every situation that we cannot control to your presence, please provide solution in Jesus' name. Do that which no man can do in Jesus' name. Raise our hope beyond our imagination in Jesus' name and touch us divinely today in the name of Jesus. We pray for Daddy and the entire family. More than ever before, you will support them in Jesus' name. You encourage them in Jesus' name. They will know more of you in Jesus' name. More revelation in Jesus' name. Today at your presence, O Lord, have your way and do that which only you can do and let the glory be yours in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout another hallelujah. We want to thank God for the opportunity of being here once again for tonight's free clinic. And we thank Daddy and Father and the Lord specially for the privilege he has given to us to minister in this platform. Today's topic is dry bone shall rise again. And our text is taken from Ezekiel 37, 1 to 5. Book of Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 to 5. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carry me out in the, in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. Every dry bone shall live in Jesus' name. A dry bones can mean many things to different people. Dry bone experience represents dryness, lack, failure, defeat, and deadness. It could also mean an hopeless situation or circumstances that is beyond our control. In the text that we have just read, the Spirit of God led Ezekiel to the valley of the dry bones, and he said there were many, and all their bones have been dry. And when God asked him, can this dry bone live again? Because he knew very well that it's an impossibility. He said to God, only you know. <laughs> Whatever be an impossible situation in your life, God who knows the origin of that impossibility will turn them to possibility in Jesus' name. We're talking about dry bones in the valley. Valley itself is a no problem. And valleys are deeper than each other. That somebody is in the valley is a no problem. If you are in the valley tonight, all your valleys shall be lifted up in Jesus' name. 
And the longer that one stays in the valley, the drier the bones will become. But as God liveth, no matter how the depth of that valley, no matter how dry that bones may be, the one who said the bones, the dry bones shall rise again, you will rise again in Jesus' name. Because the valley in which God led Ezekiel to were bones of many people who had different dreams, different aspirations, different vision, who have hope of a better future, but they find themselves forced in the valley. And the longer they stay in the valley, the drier their bones become. But one day like this evening, they encounter the word of God, the prophetic word of God, and erase the dry bones again. Is your bone dry? You will rise again in Jesus' name. And dry bones shall rise again means many things to different people. For the poor, it means I shall prosper again. In 2 King chapter 4, 1 to 7. 2 King chapter 4, 1 to 7. We have the story of the widow of Sarevat. And if anyone have told that widow, I mean 2 Kings 17, 9 to 16. 2 Kings 17, 9 to 16. If anyone have told that widow that her son will not die of hunger and poverty, it will say it's an impossibility. But for three and a half years of famine, they escaped. Because formerly, the, our only intention was to carry, I mean, gather two sticks, cook the meat that they left over, eat and die with the sun. No hope of tomorrow. No hope of anything good coming their ways again, except death. But God, who can make dry bones rise again, he made their financial problem to be solved without intervention of anyone. We also have similar case in 2 Kings chapter 4, from 6 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, 6 to 7. You can start reading from verse 1. When the widow of a prophet who inherited indebtedness from the husband and the creditor came and said, if you can't pay, we are going to take your two sons into bondage. Out of desperation, she ran to the prophet, prophet Elisha, and told a story. And the prophet told her, what did you have? He said, nothing but a little bottle of oil. What it was nothing. What had been discounted. What he did, she did not bargain that can be of any use. God changed the situation. He used that discounted vessel to become the source of solution to her problem. I don't know who I'm referring to tonight. You might have been great in debtedness. Probably you have obtained loan and the interest continue to accumulate. You're unable to service the interest, neither the principal. And the interest is now even higher than the principal. And there's no way for you. And you thought the end has come. I want to tell you financially you will rise again in the name of Jesus. And the dry bones shall rise again to the sick means I shall be healed again. In 2 Kings chapter 20, 1 to 7, 2 Kings 20, 1 to 7, you read the story of King Ezekiah there. He was sick to the point of death. And God himself sent a prophet to him Please put your house in order because you are not getting out of this particular sickness. This may be a case of someone having tried everything medically and the doctor has come to the conclusion 
there is nothing else we can do. The remaining days you have, or remaining weeks you have, or the few months that you have, just go and go and enjoy yourself and be waiting for the day of death. Because it was not man that sent a message to King Hezekiah. God himself said, nothing can be done. You are going to die. But a call of God and the same prophet was sent back to him that that sickness will not kill him. That at the third day, he will go back to the house of God again. And not only that, 15 years was added to his life. I don't know who you are. Maybe the medical people or medical doctor have given up on your case and you are giving up on yourself also. That since they say you should be, it's a terminal sickness or terminal disease, you should be waiting for day of death. I say to you, you will not die. You are coming out of that sickness in Jesus' name. You are coming out of that disease in Jesus' name. Because the same prophet that said Ezekiah will die was the same prophet that God sent that his life had been elongated. And uh, Ezekiah lived extra 15 years and he delivered his people from the bandage of Syria. If your assignment has not been concluded, you cannot die. And because God still has assignment for you, you are going to live. And your dry bone shall rise again in Jesus' name. In John chapter 5, verse 6 to 9, John 5, 6 to 9, we also have a similar story of someone who has been bedridden one spot for 38 years. And... Jesus went there when there was no more hope for him. When Jesus was asking him, do you want to be made whole? You can see his response. He said, do you know who you are talking to? That's my illustration. I have been one spot for 38 years. Those who came before, they met me here, they left me here because they first jumped into the pool and they were made whole. I have been one spot for 38 years, and you are now asking questions. He said, I have no man, no helper. There is no way out for me anymore. But because dry bone can rise again, that very day that he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, his dry bone rose again. He took his bed and began to follow Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it does not matter how long you have been in that situation. The word of God is coming to you this day that you are going to rise again. And you will rise again in Jesus' name. So we're going to take one or two prayers right now and say, Father, please speak life to my dry bones and let me receive divine healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Father, please speak life to my dry bones and let me receive healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Father, please speak life into my dry bones and let me receive divine healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, let your word locate me tonight and lift me up above poverty and death in Jesus' name. Father, let your word locate me tonight and lift me above poverty and death in the name of Jesus. Let your word locate me tonight and lift me up above poverty and death in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like I said, dry bones shall rise again means different things to different people. To the stagnated, it means I shall press forward and move up again. I shall soon press forward and move up again. You know, the valley of dry bones... It's a place of stagnation, a place of barrenness, unfruitfulness, unfruitful efforts, labor without results. In Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, we have the story of one man there called Blind Bartimaeus. He was always being brought to the gates 
of Jericho. There he begged day and night. His position is, was stagnated because of his blindness. Just like some people today might be experiencing stagnation. No promotion, no graduation, no increment, no marriage, even no business that is moving, and married without child. If that is your case, your dry bones shall rise again. Because though Bartimaeus was stagnated, he had been in one spot for many years, but he did not remain in one spot. The day he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, he called for mercy, and mercy spoke for him. Mercy intervened in the affairs of Bartimaeus, and his dry bone rose again. As you are listening to us today, irrespective of the level of your dry bones, irrespective of the longevity of the problem in your life, the mercy of God will intervene for you in Jesus' name, and the mercy of God will make your dry bone to rise again in Jesus' name. To the confused, the confused, the hopeless, who lack direction, to, for your dry bones to rise again, you will receive divine direction. Because Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, he said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. If you can put God first today, if you can surrender that problem to the hands of God today, if you can commit that situation that you did not understand to the hands of God today, he will give you direction and you get out of your confusion in Jesus' name. Because the word of God says something. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, Isaiah 30, 21, he said, And I hear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. The word of God is a light. It gives direction. And they said, you will hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way. Walk therein. Every negative voices, every negative voice that you have been hearing, that brought confusion and lack of direction to your life, they be terminated today in Jesus' name. When man is in confusion, he loses wisdom, he will lose his wisdom, he will lose his focus, he will lose his understanding. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, when you begin to read from verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1, maybe to 6, you discover that David, the giant killer, who had all the soldiers around him, they came to their camp and suddenly discovered that Enemy has captured their families, they have stolen their property, and they burned their houses because the problem was so overwhelmed. Everybody began to weep and cry, including David himself. The Bible recorded they wept so much there was no more strength in them. Why they were weeping is because they don't know the enemy that came did not leave a track. There is no trace how they can trace them. They lost direction, but by inspiration, David turned to God and asked, what will I do in this situation? Should I pursue these people? Will I overtake them? And God answered. The same God will answer you tonight in Jesus' name. If David was in a valley at that particular moment. Forget about haven't killed the Goliath. Forget about haven't killed lion. Forget about haven't killed the bear. In this particular moment, it was in a terrible valley of dry bones where there was no way for him. But because he turned to God of Israel, 
God did not leave him in that situation. I assure you, God is not leaving you in that situation. Your dry bone shall rise again in Jesus' name. Many will be in the tight corner. <laughs> well, you're in tight corner, you don't know what to do. And those who will advise, advise you to, the advice are limited to their experience. But you need to hear from God. He said, your hear will hear a voice behind you. That word you need to hear, receive it now in Jesus' name. That revelation that you need to know to give you direction you will receive today and your dry bone shall rise again. Because David did not stay in the valley. He did not stay in weeping. He did not stay being dejected and having no strength. Eventually, according to account of the scripture, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 17 to 18, 1 Samuel 30, 17 to 18, and David smote them from the twilight light even unto the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. God is giving you direction today. And every opportunity you have lost in your confusing state, you will get double back in Jesus' name. Let us pray and say, Father, every power, tie me down in one spot. Let it be broken now in Jesus' name. Father, every power, tie me down in one spot. Let them be broken today in Jesus' name. Father, every power, tie me up in one spot. Let them be broken now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, carry me tonight and lift me up from every valley of confusion in the name of Jesus. Father, carry me tonight and lift me up from every folly of confusion in the name of Jesus. Father, carry me tonight and lift me up from every valley of confusion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, enlarge my step tonight and let me overtake my enemies in Jesus' name. Father, enlarge my steps tonight and let me overtake my enemies in Jesus' name. Father, I enlarge my step tonight and let me overtake my enemies in Jesus' name. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Number five, to the lost, it means I can still find my way home. Dry bones to the lost means I can still find my way home. When somebody is in, in the valley and the Bone becomes dry. The fission becomes dim. And because the fission is become, it becomes dim, it cannot see beyond its problem. But when the, bright, the dry bone begins to rise, you will find your way home. In Luke chapter 15, 11 to 24. Luke 15, 11 to 24. We have the story of the prodigal son who lost all, not because he was hated by his family, not because the enemy was pursuing him, but by his own action. By his own action. He went to the father, give me my own inheritance. I just want to, to have my own portion. The father acceded to him, gave all his inheritance, the Bible says he went to a strange land and squandered all. At the end of the day, he came back to ground zero. That is to say, in line with the topic of tonight, he came to a deep valley Why his bone became dry. And after some times, he thought within himself, I can still find my way home. I can still see my father again. How can I continue in this valley? So he went home and found his father. I said, Father, you know, I know my position in the family before I spoil it by my action. Now I don't want to come back to that position anymore. Just make me one of your servants. 
<laughs> but the father looked unto him. He said, I'm not going to make you a servant. I'm going to reposition you back to where you belong to. You don't belong to valley. You don't belong to the dry bones. No, 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 no. Your position and inheritance in the God is already established by the blood of the Lamb. And when he completed the work, he said, it is finished. Even though you find your valley, yourself in the valley tonight, or you are passing through a dry bone experience, it can't finish you. Because Jesus Christ has already finished the work, and he said, it is finished. Like somebody will say, what God has already finished can no longer finish you. So, that's why the Father that he has turned down everything that he got from the Father, the Father received him back, and there was celebration. You're going to be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Though you may be the architect of your dry bones, you may be the architect of the valley in which you are, it does not matter. The good news tonight is that the mercy of God is an everlasting mercy. The mercy of God endureth forever. And because of his mercy, he will reposition you in Jesus' name. So he said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So as the prodigal son went back to his father, so God is inviting you. Come back to me, son. Come back to me, daughter. Your peace is not in yourself. Your peace is in me. You can't find rest in any source except through me. I'm the one who can give you a permanent rest. If you desire your dry bones to rise again, you desire peace of God beyond understanding, and you want to have rest in life, it's invitation to you right now that you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Give all to him and say, I want to become your friend today. I don't want to be living my life carelessly anymore. And if you are prepared to do this today, we're going to pray for you and God will save your soul. So we're going to pray once again and say, Father, Deliver me tonight from the pit of shame and reproach in Jesus' name. Father, deliver me tonight from the pit of shame and reproach in Jesus' name. Father, deliver me tonight from the pit of shame and reproach in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, have mercy on me and let me recover all my losses in Jesus' name. Father, have mercy on me and let me recover all my losses in Jesus' name. Father, have mercy on me. And let me recover all my losses in Jesus' name. The question now, while will my dry bone rise again? Why is God interested in making my dry bones to rise again? Number one is that God has not forgotten you. Isaiah 49, 15. Isaiah 49, 15. He said, can a woman forget the uh, sucking child? that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb, yea, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Man may forget you. Even those you trusted and depended upon, they, be, they can betray you, they can desert you. But God will never, never forget you. Because man will be man, but God will also be God. So he has not forgotten you. That is why your dry bone will rise tonight. Number two, God has not given up on you. Ezekiel 37, verse 3. Ezekiel 37, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can this bone live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Because prophet Ezekiel is a, was a man, he saw the situation of the dry bone and he gave up. But God did not give up on the dry bones. Men may give up on you. The situation may be threatening so much that you want to give up on yourself. But have this assurance tonight that God has not given up on you. And because God has not given up on you, your dry bone will rise again. If you can make the dry bones of Lazarus to come again after four days, 
it will make your dry bones also to come up again in the name of Jesus. Number three is that God cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Or as he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God can never tell lies. If you have spoken his word, situation may change. Circumstances may change. But God remains faithful to his word. Uh, one composer said, all may change, but, but Jesus never changed. Every situation around all may change. Even it could be cloud official so much that we think what God has said will never come to pass again. It is a lie. Because our God can never lie. What he said to you is going to come to pass. Because as soon as, soon as he said unto Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 37, 5 to 6, and he said he should prophesy unto the dry broom. He prophesied and changes came. Because when you read verse, 37, verse 7 of Ezekiel 37, 7, he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bone came together, bone to his bone. He has done it before. He will do it again. The word of God will accomplish his purpose. That promise he has promised you will come to pass in Jesus' name. Number four, there is going to be a shaking in your life. Because Ezekiel 37 verse 7, Ezekiel 37 where I read, he said, when I prophesied as I was commanded, there was a noise and behold a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. As you believe the word of God today, there's going to be a shaking in your life. But this is a positive shaking. A shaking that will bring back all what the enemies have scattered in your life. After this shaking, the everything that the enemy have stolen, every any, what the enemy have corrupted, what the enemy have thought will no longer be possible, God Almighty, we bring them back in the mighty name of Jesus. It could be your home that has been scattered. It could be your business that has been scattered. It could be your marriage that has been scattered. Immediately after this shaking, they will come together. Bones to bone, they will reconcile together. Any reconcilable situation will be reconciled tonight in the name of Jesus. And number five, why your dry bone will rise again, his word is powerful. Hebrew 4.12, his word is powerful. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Because Ezekiel was prophesying according to the word of God, not his, his own word, the dry bone rose again. And because you are hearing this word, the word is as powerful as it was in the beginning. It's through the word that the word was created. Even now, it's through the, that word that the, the whole word is being sustained. And the word will sustain your life in Jesus' name. If sea and the wind can obey his word, if the storm of life can obey his word, if the fig tree can obey his word, the valley and the dry bone in your lives. They will obey his word tonight and you will rise again in Jesus' name. In conclusion, the only barrier between you and dry bone situation and the power of God is your heart. If you will believe in your heart and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, every dry bone situation will come back to life. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Hebrews 3.15, he said, Why it is said, today, not tomorrow, today if you will hear his voice, heart can adding not your heart, as in the day of provocation. You have heard the word. And he said, you should not harden your heart. Just surrender to him. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you right now. If you are tired of careless living, 
If you are tired of being alone in your body, in your situation, and you want your dry bone to rise again, and you want to begin to enjoy the peace of God, just follow us in this prayer, and I will pray for you. Just say, Lord Jesus, accept you as my Lord and Savior today. I believe you died for me and rose up the, the third day. Please wash away my sin with your blood, and I begin to serve you forever in Jesus' name. If you have done this, please rise up wherever you are as we pray. Lord Jesus, as many have come to you to receive you as their Lord and Savior, who has casted their burden upon you right now, please receive them in Jesus' name. Save their soul in Jesus' name. And let their bones, their dry bones, rise again in Jesus' name. Thank you, grace Lord Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you are follow us in this prayer, you will see some phone numbers on the screen. Please give your details, that is your name, your phone number, how we can locate you, and your prayer request. Send it to that phone number. It will read the information desk of Daddy and Father in the Lord, who will be praying for you, and you'll be receiving miracles on a daily basis. And if you are nearer to any redeemed Christian church of God parish, just go there and meet the pastor that you want to give your information because you surrender your life to Jesus and you want this information to read the death of daddy. He will guide you and help you to do that. And the rest of us, for the few minutes we have, we want to pray a few prayers uh, so as to conclude. Are we ready? Say, Father, you are the God of all possibility. Please turn my impossible situation around today in Jesus' name. Father, you are God of, of every possibility, every impossible situation in my life. Turn them around today in Jesus' name. Father, you are God of possibilities. Every impossible situation in my life, turn them around in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, please remember me and lift me up from every folly of my life in Jesus' name. Father, please remember me and lift up every folly of my life in Jesus' name. Father, please remember me and lift up every valley of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, I reject and break away from every satanic barricade on my way in Jesus' name. Father, I reject and break away from every satanic barricade on my way in Jesus' name. Father, I reject and break away from every satanic barricade on my way in Jesus' name. Finally, we're going to pray and say, Father, let my rising surprise my adversary in Jesus' name. Father, let my rising surprise my adversary in Jesus' name. Father, let my rising surprise my adversary in Jesus' name. Father, let my rising surprise my adversary in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray together. If you have any specific problem, mention it to God right now. If you are sick in your body, lay your hands on the spot if possible. And I want to assure you that he is praying with all of us in this program. And you will not live without receiving your miracle in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you because you have said it. And if you have said it, it's already done. Because David said, once you have spoken, twice have I heard, the power belongs to, to God. And you say, your word that you have come out, out of you will never go back void. Your word has gone out tonight that all our dry bones shall rise again. Every impossibility of our life shall turn to possibility. And I pray tonight, everyone experiencing dry bones in their life, in their spiritual life, in their marriage, in their career, in every situation they might find themselves in the valley. Let them rise again in the name of Jesus. At the authority of your word and the efficacy of your name, I command, let them rise again in the name of Jesus. And I decree that the affliction that brought them into valley, affliction that made their bones to be dry, they will never rise again in Jesus' name. Every problem we are brought in here today, let them receive solution in Jesus' name. If there is anyone sick among us, by your stripe, heal them now in Jesus' name. Let everyone have a testimony today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. You know our service is not concluded until we give our offering. Please raise your offering up so that we can connect with our miracle, seal our miracle. And if you are paying online, the instruction is already on the screen. Please follow that instruction. Let us lift it up. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for tonight. And every area that we have been experiencing dry bones in our finances, let our name come to them in Jesus' name. Financially, let us rise again in Jesus' name. Use this offering for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Receive the Lord.